Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And some of you probably thought about starting your very own sports podcast. Well, let me help you out. I want to tell you a little bit about Anchor. Now, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's an easy way to make a podcast. And it's free. You don't have to worry about paying a bunch of money each month. There are creation tools to allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so you don't have to worry about that. So it can be heard on apps like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So go to anchorfm.com and start your very own podcast today. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And on this edition of the State of the Saints podcast, we have a special guest with us today. We have John DeShazer. Um, some of you may know him. You'll know NewOrleansSaints.com and also covering the New Orleans Pelicans. So how are you doing today, Mr. DeShazer? I'm doing pretty well. Um, outside of the heat, I'm doing good. <laughs> well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time out to spend with us, us and uh, Who That Nation and on the State of the Saints podcast to talk about uh, the New Orleans Saints. Thank you so much, sir. No, I appreciate you having me. Uh, well, uh, first off, let's go, let's go ahead and uh, just start with the first question, uh, training camp. I mean, a lot of people in Who That Nation are excited about training camp, but this is a very unconventional training camp that the New Orleans Saints are dealing with. So uh, the first question I have for you is, uh, how do you feel about training camp this season and how are the Saints going to be able to make those transitions, you know, from just, you know, not dealing with OTAs, not dealing with minicamp, but just going right into training camp with no preseason? Yeah, it's really, really odd from that standpoint. You mentioned it now. I guess the, the positive is everybody's got to work from the same ground rules. So, you know, it's not like somebody's got a, a, an advantage on them. And actually, uh, under these circumstances, the Saints probably do have the advantage because they've got a veteran roster. They've got a veteran coaching staff. So they have the expectations, yeah, but they know what to do in terms of preparation. And they already probably know the playbook and, and they know everything that the coaches want to do. So from that standpoint, they probably start out ahead of most NFL teams. But it's extremely odd. I mean, you know, to not have OTAs, to not have minicamp. And that's the that's the the situation where rookies who are drafted get a chance to acclimate themselves and they hadn't had that. Uh, you don't get that camaraderie. Yeah. Uh, these guys have been apart from each other a long time. And, and these guys like being around each other. You don't yeah. get the competitiveness of working out, uh, whether it's in the weight room or conditioning or whatever it is. Uh, these guys are elite athletes and they like to get out there and measure themselves against each other. Uh, yeah. And in OTAs and minicamp, that's where all those, kind of personal battle start, you know, right. DBs against uh, DBs against cornerback. I mean, DBs against receivers and running backs against linebackers. You see a lot of stuff going on there, a lot of, a lot of smack talk and a lot of good <laughs> plays being made in those situations. So you miss all of that kind of stuff when you don't have that off season. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that is true. You know, no, no off season, but like you, like you said, um, the Saints have like the, the chemistry aspect of the team. You know, you have people like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you got Tom Brady, Gronk, and, and the rest of them, they have to learn how to uh, work together. But, you know, like you say with the Saints, I mean, these are some of the same usual suspects. But uh, there are some, um, you know, some free agents and some undrafted uh, rookie free, uh, free agents on the Saints team. How do you think the, the lack of preseason is going to affect them possibly making the New Orleans Saints roster? Well, I think it hurts the undrafted guys the most because, you know, you, when you draft a player, you've got something invested in him. So, mm -hmm. you know, you give him, you know, every opportunity to make the team. That's that's just the way it is. That's life. Right. But when you're undrafted, you don't have any skins on the wall. You know, you don't have that kind of investment in you. And, and think about it. If if this year was last year and you couldn't have OTAs, and couldn't have mini camp, does Deontay Harris make the team? Mm -hmm. um, maybe question. not. And Deontay Good Harris question. ends up being an all-pro uh, returner. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, you don't have those opportunities. You don't have the preseason games that you can get them out there and, and put them in the fire. You know, can you simulate that in practice? It's hard because you get guys out in practice. The last thing you want to do is get somebody hurt in practice. Right. Now, the last right. thing you want to do is lose somebody for the season in practice. So it's going to be really hard for to, to me for the undrafted guys because you're trying to turn heads 
and there just aren't a lot of situations where you might be able to turn heads when you're getting into practice and the vets got to get their reps in. So where right. do you get your reps? I mean, yeah. you know, reps usually would come in the preseason games. Yeah. But unfortunately, in practice, you know, you might not be able to get the reps that you want to for those young guys. So for them, you know, this this in the good situation. Yeah, I, I, I look at it too, um, John. I, I look at it how, you know, some players are really good in practice. And sometimes when yep. they get on the field, you know, it, it may don't be able to, you know, they not be able to pick up the same type of success they would in practice. So I'm just wondering, I'm, I'm a little bit confused because you have some players that are good game time players and not good practice players and then vice versa. So I'm just wondering, like, how is that going to, you know, affect affect some of those younger guys? You know, I hear people like uh, a lot of people that ask me about, you know, Marquise Callaway, the wide receiver out of Tennessee. And, you know, and um, I think Bachi, the linebacker out of Michigan State, a lot of people, you know, wondering, like, what are those guys going to do? But uh, speaking of free agents, the Saints picked up two uh, free agents earlier on today. Uh, Benny uh, Fowler, the wide receiver, uh, he spent most of his uh, career with the Denver Broncos, six seasons. He had two with the New York Giants. And also Nigel uh, Bryan, um, a, a linebacker out of the, from the Philadelphia Eagles who had some success there. Uh, the New Orleans Saints picked these guys up right before training camp. Uh, what can these guys bring to the table? And what does it say about the Saints uh, linebacker court that they picked up a guy like uh, Bryan uh, so late? Um, well, I guess like at the beginning of training camp. Well, with him, you know, you get fortunate because you get a guy who's got some experience. A guy who's mm -hmm. been to the Super Bowl uh, with Philly. A guy who yeah. won a Super Bowl with Philly. So he yeah. understands, you know, what winning and success and being a part of a good team looks like. Can he give you some depth at linebacker or can he give you some insurance? Because, look, the Saints, you know, they don't have much certainty at linebacker beyond Demario Davis. That's you true. hope Alex Anzalone can be healthy. You mm -hmm. hope Kiko Alonso can come back healthy. You hope Zach Bond can come in as a rookie and make an impact. You hope that if all else fails, Craig Robertson can give you some snaps. But mm -hmm. you don't know if you're the Saints, you know. And then they drafted a guy uh, last year, you know, um, Caden oh, Ellis. Okay. So yeah, okay. you just yeah. don't know what their situation is there. So from that standpoint, Nigel probably has a nice opportunity to make this team. And he knows special teams. And, and yeah. that can help a whole lot because special teams is critical in the NFL now. And mm -hmm. the Saints showed last year, I think the Saints – either blocked or, or deflected four punts last year. Wow. So that can be critical uh, in, in terms of making the team. And the same thing for the wide receiver, because mm -hmm. the, the wide receiver rotation is probably pretty much set, mm -hmm. but you can make this team on special teams. You can get out there and make a play on special teams. Now, you won't be the returner, but you can be somebody who can, who can rush the punter. You can be yeah. somebody who can go down on kickoffs. So that might be where he has to make his mark to get on this team. Yeah, and I, I looked at it too. Um, I looked at his average. He averaged ninety-three tackles over the last three seasons. That's pretty impressive. And I know he played in a Jim Swartz uh, defense, and he was one of those guys, you know, that uh, Philadelphia really relied on. So um, I, there, there are a lot of unanswered questions at the linebacker position, you know, as far as like, uh, you know, will these guys be able to stay healthy? Even though Kiko Alonso, he did some really good things uh, this past season, but. I mean, he does have a history of, you know, injuries and stuff like that. So, you, like you say, you have to wonder, can you count on him? Uh, speaking yeah, so, of which. So, uh -huh. And Alex Anzalone, too, because Alex Anzalone has been injured two of his three NFL years. Yeah. Uh, he was really, really good the year he was healthy, but he's was, but he been hurt two of the other years. And so, yeah. you know, can you depend on those guys to hold up? Yeah, that is true. Uh, you, you talked about Zach Bond. I, I just want to ask you this real quick before we move on. Like, uh he was one of those uh, linebackers that mostly put his hand on the ground. You know, do you think that he can make that transition uh, for being like one of those linebackers that stand up instead of putting his hand on the ground, I guess, mostly in third down NASCAR packages? Do you think that he will be able to make that transition? Well, I think he can because he's kind of freakish athletically. He's, mm -hmm. you know, he's a guy who he was the, he's the 200 meter all time champ at his high school. He also mm -hmm. is the all time leader high jump at his high school so he's got some freakish athletic ability and you hope that you can transition now again not having otas and not having mini camp that hurts in his development because you can't get him out on the practice field and put him in those situations and get him comfortable dropping into coverage and get him comfortable doing those things being in space those are the things you miss when you don't get an offseason so when it's abbreviated like it is now, 
you might have to just kind of have him in those specialty packages because that's where he's most comfortable. That's where he's been the most effective. But, you know, they'll keep working with him to make sure that he learns those things, you know, in coverage again and, and how to drop and how to cover. But, you know, he hadn't done it, but he's got the ability to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I know uh, linebackers coach Mike Hodges, he was talking about him as far as like his film study and how intelligent he was. So they, they were really high on him. So I know a lot of people are looking forward to him. I'm I'm one of those people in particular. But uh, that, that's uh, one position that we, I can say that the Saints are pretty stacked, and that's the wide receiver position. But one wide receiver I want to focus on is Traquan Smith. Uh, for the last couple of years, Traquan Smith uh, has been with the New Orleans Saints. A lot of people like – uh, consider him as the number two receiver for the team but it seems like you know he hasn't really lived up to the expectations uh they they signed Emmanuel Sanders in the offseason so the question to you is uh Traquan Smith uh do you see him uh as maybe the number three receiver or you know could you see him possibly not playing for the Saints in the foreseeable future well I, I think he's gonna be on the team he's a third round pick so he's a guy mm-hmm. who's who's got some investment in it but mm-hmm. when you get an Emmanuel Sanders, that means, you know, the Saints are saying, look, we, we weren't satisfied with the production we got out of the quote unquote number two receiver behind Michael Thomas. And mm-hmm. Ted Ginn Jr., you know, he gives you some big plays here and there, but you need some consistency there. And that's what Emmanuel Sanders comes in to give you. Traquan has shown flashes. You know, it mm-hmm. seems like every time you turn around, if Drew Brees, you know, is about to set a record, Traquan's the guy who's catching the ball. <laughs> he's, kind of, he's kind of funny that way. Yeah. But he's got to be consistent. He's got to be consistent in his route running. He's just got to consistently line up the right way. And right. he's got to stay healthy. That's a, that's another thing that's happened to him where he's been dinged up and he hasn't been able to be on the field. And, you know, in football, mm-hmm. well, in all sports, the biggest ability is availability. If that's you true. can't be on the field, if you can't be out there playing, then team ain't got a whole lot of use for you because, you know, they need you uh, in battle. He's got yeah. a lot of talent, you know, Trey yeah. He's got a lot of ability, and this is kind of I don't I don't I hate to say make or break, but this could be a make or break type year for him because mm-hmm. you know again you get Emmanuel Sanders to take some of that pressure off, and he should be in positions to where he can be in some winning positions. You know if he's going to be the number three receiver or whatever, or, you know some situations they'll be the number two receiver when he's on the field. But you still got Jared Cook at tight end. You mm-hmm. still got Alvin Kamara at running back, so right. he's still a guy who can fly under the radar probably get some one-on-one matchups and hopefully win them. Yeah. I, I look at what Traquan Smith, I mean, he, he does have a level of toughness. I mean, some of them catches that he that he catch, I mean, I think about the game against the Philadelphia Eagles. He caught that touchdown, took that big hit. Uh, I think a pass that uh, Drew Brees threw to him, I mean, it knocked his helmet off. I think KZ hit him. I mean, so he shows like he's tough, you know, but I don't know. It just like seems like in, in, in crucial parts of of the game, you know, he he goes missing, and eventually, like he he just shows up out of nowhere. So I, I think that you know, and I look at also, you know, Deontay Harris. I, I looked at him with that big play, you know, against the Minnesota Vikings in a wild card game. Uh, if you notice, late in the season, the Saints were like using him in a wide receiver screen. So it seemed like they're trying to uh, you know up uptick his uh, his snap count. So and also Emmanuel Butler, you know, another guy that a lot mm-hmm. of people have uh, questions about. So I'm just me personally, I'm, I'm wondering like how is Traquan Smith going to be able to weather the storm and uh, you know keep his position with those guys uh, kind of just lurking up behind him. But uh, yeah, but there's, there's competition, and he he gonna have to fight for his snaps. I mean, that's 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 the life in the NFL. He's gonna have to yeah. fight for him. He's got to earn them because you mentioned them. Um, you know, Deontay's coming on. He mm-hmm. He's obviously an elite returner, but if he yeah. can give you something that receiver, especially with that speed, then they're going to yeah. put him on the field. Yeah. And also, I, um, also, John, you know, it's kind of similar to Tyreek Hill. You know, Tyreek Hill, when he first came to Kansas City, he was just, you know, known for being on special teams, a real fast guy, elusive. And eventually, like, they, you know, Andy, he started working with Andy Reid, and now he's, like, one of the best wide receivers in the league. And I know a lot of people, like, kind of compare him uh to a young Tyreek Hill so I'm I'm interested to see if the Saints are going to you know constantly use him and and how you know the offseason has really you know worked for him so uh also I want to talk a little bit about Drew Brees there's a workout video that uh (laughs) everybody's been talking about I mean Drew Brees throwing the football down the field uh I want to know did you see that video and uh what did you think about it well I've seen it and you know what he's you know, one thing you can say about this, if the guy's got a weakness on the football field, he's going to look for a way 
to get it right. Um, mm-hmm. He's he's you know he's fanatical in terms of his fitness, and so you know the talk the last two, three, four years I guess might be his arm strength. And mm-hmm. you know he can't can he throw the deep one now? You know do the Saints challenge the deep? Can they stretch the field? Well, if they got somebody that can stretch the field, can Drew even get it to him? Well, mm-hmm. obviously this offseason that's something that he said. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I can do to improve in that area. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me that he would do that because he comes back with something new or tweaked every year where he's saying, you know what, okay, how can I how can I get this better? You know, these last couple of years, he's been on a kick pretty much to where he says, you know what, okay, I'm just not going to throw interceptions. And <laughs> and he has almost eliminated interceptions mm-hmm. from the whole from the whole process. So, you know, that's just one of those things where he said, you know what, if it if it makes this team better to throw it deep, and he's got some guys to throw it deep too. Then you're going to have to be able to do it because you know at some point in, in the NFL season, you are going to have to you are going to have to test people deep. You don't want right. to just do it just for the sake of doing it. You don't want to just right. pitch one out there. But in certain situations, if they're just rolling up on you and you got somebody who can get behind them, then you got to be able to use that person. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's true. I mean Drew Brees, like you said, is is it, is really consistent. I mean the month of December last season, he had 15 touchdowns and one interception. So. I mean, he, Drew Brees has done an outstanding job making sure that he doesn't turn the ball over. But he like, you know, like you said, the you know, the who that nation, a lot of people, you know, are concerned about Drew Brees' arm strength. You know, can he be able to get the ball down the field? You know, in a, in a wild card game against the Minnesota Vikings, he threw a ball down the field, and I mean, it, it didn't really look that good. So a lot of people, you know, are really concerned about that that area of the Saints' offense. You know, them with their big explosive plays. You know, like they were back in like you know. 2009, 2010, you know, and, and you know, in the early 2010. So, um, looking forward to seeing the Drew Brees, you know, kind of, you know, can uh, step it up, throwing the ball down the field. Uh, but uh, for one, great quarterback to his his uh, succession plan. Uh, we have uh, Jameis Winston, and we also have uh, Taysom Hill. Uh, the question is, uh, first, is about Taysom Hill. Do you think that you're going to see an increase in snap? Uh, for Taysom Hill this season, where they use him a little bit more under center than they did in years past? I think it's possible because they found something there they like. They like having him out there and putting that pressure on the defense. Now, and and in some of those situations, you know, the question might be whether Drew's going to be on the field with him because when you put Drew out at receiver, let's let's be real here. That's not a threat. <laughs> so you so you basically just got a guy out there who who's not you know going to put any stress on the defense from that right. standpoint. Um, but they like having the ball in Taysom's hands, so he might get it under center a bit more. I think we'll see him more on offense. I think we'll see him a lot less on special teams now because, you know, if he's the number two quarterback, and it looks like that might be the case, if he's the number two quarterback, you don't want to risk him out there, you know, on kamikaze detail where he's running down, you know, covering kickoffs and where he's, right. you know, on the on the punt block team and where he's the punt mm-hmm. protector. You know, you mm-hmm. don't want to put him in those situations, even though, he might be the best guy on the team in those situations, but you don't want to run unnecessary risks in those situations. So I think you'll see him less on special teams and probably a little bit more on offense. I wonder how much you will see him at tight end because the Saints now have you know three tight ends that they really like, Jared Cook, Josh Hill, and they drafted Adam Troutman. So mm-hmm. you know maybe they drafted Adam Troutman so you don't have to use Taysom Hill as much on at tight end anymore and you can put him in those special packages at, at, at quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Taysom Hill a lot. You know, I think that he does like a, a variety of things. He's definitely a Swiss Army knife. But I feel like if the Saints uh, invest in him and possibly being a future uh, quarterback of the New Orleans Saints, you definitely, like you said, don't want to have him on special team, you know, put him in harm's way. But also, let's talk about Jameis Winston. Um, Jameis Winston, uh, you know, the tail of two quarterbacks in Tampa, you know, one week he'll throw him. Four touchdowns and next week he'll throw four interceptions. Uh, he had 30, I think 32, uh, 33 touchdowns, 30 interceptions last season. Do you think that the New Orleans Saints organization, um, Sean Payton and his offense will be able to save the career of Jameis Winston? <laughs> I do. Because because this, this is what will happen. I mean, and that Tampa Bay's offense was a lot more, you know, swashbuckler, to, for lack of better terms. You know, they, they, they didn't mind going for broke. Uh, but the Saints will say, okay, you don't have to throw it deep. You can check it down. We'll take the profits and we'll punt. And I right. think with Bay, I think Jameis got into some situations where he felt like he needed to do too much and he tried to do too much and it showed. You know, some right. of those were, you know, ill advised at best. Where right. you can get 
some of that out of them because you can say, look, don't throw it in that coverage. Don't throw it in that situation. Just dump it down to the, to the running back here. Mm-hmm. Dump it to the top end. Take the check down. You know, punt and live the fight another day because right. we probably play a better defense here with the Saints. But again, you know, you don't want to put yourself in those situations where you just feel like you got to win it by yourself. Now, we saw some of that from, from Drew Brees, you know, maybe eight, ten years ago where yeah. you know, when the Saints were good defensively, he'd have some interceptions that you'd be like, you know, what's going on? But he felt like he had to do it on offense. He felt like right. there wasn't a chance for the team to win unless they were putting up 35 a game. Well, hopefully right. you can get out of Jameis. You know, you put him on a better team and say, okay, you don't have to win it by yourself. You mm-hmm. can rely on your teammates. You can right. check it down to Kamara and let Alvin break a couple of tackles and get you a first down. Right. Or you can check it down to, you know, this guy, or you've got a tight end in Jared Cook that you can get in the seam and create some havoc. So, you know, hopefully he doesn't feel like he's got to carry everything on his shoulders. And I, I think they can get that out of him. Yeah, and, I, and another thing, too, uh, is – they didn't have a running game in Tampa, you know, for a long time. I mean, they, I mean, they seemed like he never really had anybody. I mean, he had Doug Martin for a while, but Doug Martin was uh, constantly getting hurt. And it, it seems to me like he just never had a running game, never had one of those running backs that can, like you said, you know, catch out of the backfield, that can make some plays, make things happen. So I think with the addition of somebody like Alvin Kamara, you know, you can offer some line and do all the things you really can you know, have a good running game. You can have a, a, a scat bag, you know, a guy that can uh, pick up the first down and, you know, check it down to him. I think it, it really helped him. Uh, I, I look at guys like him and another guy like Matthew Stafford. Guys I look at like him, a lot of talent, a lot of abilities, but it just seems like they, they play for organizations that really have a running game to support uh, some of the skills. So uh, hopefully Jamison Orleans can, you know, resurrect his career. Uh, another person, uh, you played for New Orleans, uh, went to Philadelphia, he came back to the Saints in the offseason, Malcolm Jenkins. Uh, my question to you is, uh, how do you think Malcolm Jenkins is going to help the secondary of the New Orleans Saints this season? Well, I, I think he helps from this standpoint. One, the Saints like to play a lot of three safety. So, you know, he, he can be on the field in that situation. He's still got some game in him. Um, he's still capable of coverage. He still can be used in the box. You can still blitz him. He can still create havoc. And one of the big things for him uh, with the Saints defense is, you know, he's seen everything. So when you line him up in the secondary, he can align your defense. He can get guys in position, and he's secure enough to where, you know, he doesn't feel like he has to make the play himself. He can put maybe Marcus Williams in position uh, to make a play, or maybe, you know, C.J. Gardner-Johnson in position to make a play, or maybe, you know, Marshawn Lattimore or Jack Rabbit Jenkins. But he's good enough and smart enough and veteran enough to be able to do that. And so he gives you that. And plus, it gives you the leadership. And not right. just on the field, but in the locker room. He's a guy who's going to keep things even keeled and level-headed. So, because in, in the football season, there's going to be some adversity. I mean, you're going to have some games that you want back. You're going to have some plays that you want back. And he's a guy who can you know, kind of help coach up the defense, so to speak, because he's been around so long and he's seen everything. Uh, and, and again, it, it helps that he can still play. He can still fly around and make plays. Right. Yeah, I think that he's going to be a really good addition uh, to the New Orleans Saints, especially for somebody like uh, Marcus Williams. So uh, Marcus Williams, he reminds me a lot of a, of a young Malcolm Jenkins the first time around when he was with the Saints. Uh, some of the things that I see that Malcolm Jenkins uh, did with the Saints, uh, you know, first time around, I, I look at, uh, Marcus Williams. The only difference is I feel like Marcus Williams has a little bit uh, better hands than uh, than uh, Malcolm Jenkins had, but I see a lot of him uh, inside of uh, inside of uh, you know Marcus Williams. I think that Marcus Williams is going to benefit the most. And um, also, I just want to talk to you about Davin Porter. Over the last couple of years, uh, Davin, uh, you know he's been injured. Uh, he's got some flashes on the field. So, uh, what do you think about? Uh, do you think he's going to take a step forward in his third season? Well, that's the big thing. You you just mentioned it. It's availability. Marcus has got to be on the field. When he's been on the field, uh, we've seen the progress. He looks like he can be a monster, and he's had some monster plays, but he's got to be available. He's got to be on the field. Uh, he can rush the passer. He's, he's lean looking, but he's a lot stronger than he looks. Uh, he, can, he, can be, he can get around the corner and of course, it's going to benefit him 
Ham, Cam, Jordan on the uh, on the left side. He's on the right side, and then you got you know David on Yamada and Sheldon Rankins if he's healthy uh, in the middle. Yeah. So all things benefit him, but he got to be on the field. He's got to be healthy. Right. Um, yeah. uh, last year, uh, even in his absence, what can happen for a guy who's on the field? Enough. Trey Hendrickson had a really nice year for the Saints, uh, getting sacks. Those right. could have been Marcus, Marcus Davenport sacks, sacks if he'd have been healthy. So he's just got to be healthy. He got to be on the field because he's got ability. He's got talent. He's he's freakish athletically, but being freakish athletically doesn't help you a bit if you're hurt and you're inactive for games. So hopefully uh, he can put together a really healthy season. Now, if if he's healthy and he's on the field, I think we'll see the numbers. All right. Yeah. Um. I look at him. I see like a lot of talent. He reminds me a lot of uh Jadavian Clowney as far as his ability and skill set. You know, so I think that he, he can do a lot of great things. I mean, he's really good at run stopping. Um, I think according to Pro Football Focus, I think he's like in the top five in that in that uh, category. So I just think a lot of people just want to see him play a 16-game season, um, you know, and, you know, see what he actually has. Because, I mean, I think he had like a stretch before he got hurt. I mean, he was – you can argue. You can arguably say he was one of the best defensive lines in in in, in yep. the league at that time. You know, so yep. uh, he ended up getting injured, and you know, it's kind of just went out the window with that. But uh, another person, you know, we we can we I have to talk about is uh Cameron Jordan. Now I, I've seen an interesting stat. He played nine seasons and he has never missed a game, and which is incredible. So I just want to I just want to know what do you think about Cam Jordan and. Why doesn't Cam Jordan get the recognition that most defensive uh, linemen get uh, for being great? You never see him, like, mentioned among some of the best defensive linemen. It don't seem like he's ever up for defensive player of the year. So why is it that Cam Jordan has become one of the most underrated defensive ends in football? Well, a lot of it has to do with, I think, uh, you know, his unit not having ha- not having equal success. Uh, Saints defense. If, if you've got a great defensive player, but your defense is ranked, you know, 20th or whatever, and, you know, the people tend to overlook it and say, you know, okay, well, how good is he if his defense ain't top 10? Uh, so right. I think he's been I think he's been shorted from that standpoint. But, man, he, he's a monster. I mean, a couple of years ago, he had as good a year as a defensive lineman, you know, a, as I've seen anybody have in terms of, you know, sacks and tackles for loss and batted passes. And I remember he batted one up and, and caught it for a touchdown. You know, he got those. He's got those kinds of skills, and he's got them, and he's relentless. Um, you know, a lot of guys have talent, but not a lot of guys put in the kind of work that Cam Jordan does. And, and that's not to slight, you know, people's work ethic. He's just maniacal. He he's he crazy work. I mean, he <laughs> you know, after practice, he's running sprints, and you know, he's always lifting. He's always looking for something else to give him an edge. I've never seen a man you know, play football the way he does and have the amount of energy that he does, you know, down after down after down. He plays the run. He play, you know, he, he obviously sacks quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. And so it's no surprise that he gets results because he's just relentless. And, and you go back to his rookie year, I don't think he got one sack his rookie year. <laughs> and he wow. got that in like <laughs> the last game of the season. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden, you know, he's number two in franchise history in sacks. Mm-hmm. That tells you, you know, production he's had the last couple of years. He's just coming on stronger and stronger and stronger. And, you know, it only seems to get better. And, and you know, you mentioned he hadn't missed a game. It ain't because he ain't hurt. You know, he's had off-season yeah. surgery the last couple of years. Uh, this mm-hmm. year was a core injury. I know he had, you know, some stuff going on with his ankle last year. Mm-hmm. But he just refuses to miss games. He don't mm-hmm. miss plays. He won't miss practice. When he misses a practice, it's almost, you know, it's real noticeable when he's not out there because yeah. he's always out there. He wants all the reps in practice, training camp or not. He wants all mm. the work, you know, and that's the kind of guy that you want to build your team around. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and let me ask you this. Uh, there, was a, there was a debate that you and Cam Jordan were having during the interview uh, <laughs> about Eli Manning. And that interview, actually, uh, you know, I think it was on uh, Undisputed with Shannon and uh, Skip. Did you think at the, that particular time, did you think that that, that debate was going to uh, go viral? <laughs> no, no. I mean, we, we, we were just talking. We were, and really, we were just kind of BSing around. I mean, we were uh-huh. talking. We were BSing around. And, um, and the cameras were going. But, I mean, you know, I didn't 
you know, I don't think either one of us thought a whole lot of it, which is why mm-hmm. we were talking the way we were talking. Right. And the uh, next thing you know, it's all over TV. And I'm like, oh, my God, I did not, you know. And, and <laughs> you know, my face wasn't on there. But one of my one of my homeboys back home, actually, he called me up and he was like, was that you? And I was like, yeah. That was, that was <laughs> but, yeah, we, we did, I mean, I, you know, now he might have. I don't think he thought so either. We were just. Because me and him, we'll talk mm-hmm. like that in the locker room. From time. I right. mean, you know, we'll go back and forth and just kind of, you know, BS around. So I, I kind of mm-hmm. felt like that was what that was. I didn't think right. a whole lot of it. The next thing I know, it was all over the place. And I was like, nah. And, and you know, just, you know, some folks in the building weren't all that happy about it. Let's, let's, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it, it was uh, it was some great content. And I know a lot of people, you know, around the Huda Nation and, and around the sports world enjoyed it. But uh, Mr. John DeShazer, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for uh, being a part of the State of the Saints podcast. And I know everyone in the Who That Nation is looking forward to, uh, you know, your your intake and everything like that, your insight, excuse me, for um, this upcoming season. So we're looking forward to it, sir. Thank you so much. Well, TJ, I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me, man. And, uh, and let's do it again. Okay, will do. Thank you so much, sir. All right. All right. Take care. All right, you too. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John DeShazer. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. DeShazer, for being a part of the show. Man, that was fun. <laughs> Look, I, I apologize. Uh, I apologize for the background noise, ladies and gentlemen. It was having, um, you know, a little bit of technical difficulties and stuff like that. But uh, I'll be back a little bit later on to uh, answer some of the questions uh, that you may have. So, uh keep it locked right here to the state of the saints uh we'll be back and uh if you have any questions about the who that nation or the interview with mr DeShazer, uh just let me know okay y'all take care and it is yours truly tj jones all i gotta say is who that <laughs>